Unfortunately, nuclear terrorism is a very genuine threat in my view. We know that repeatedly terrorists have attempted to get nuclear material and the nuclear expertise needed to turn it into a bomb. We know that uh, from repeated government studies actually that it doesn't take a Manhattan Project to make a bomb. About 90% of the work in the Manhattan Project was actually making the nuclear material. Once you have the nuclear material, you're well on the way toward making a bomb. And in fact, the government studies have concluded that it is plausible that a sm small group of reasonably sophisticated terrorists would be able to put together at least a crude nuclear bomb. In the case of highly enriched uranium, making a nuclear bomb is really about slamming two pieces together at high speed. It's not rocket science. Uh, now, it takes a fair amount of nuclear material. Uh, and so everybody thinks, well, presumably that nuclear material must be secure, it must be well guarded. That's true for some nuclear material, but not for all the nuclear material in the world. And we have seen repeatedly real cases where highly enriched uranium or plutonium, the two materials you could use to make a nuclear bomb, have actually gotten stolen. The consequences if terrorists actually did manage to detonate some kind of crude nuclear bomb in a major city are absolutely horrifying. And so there's a real potential for panic and people fleeing major cities and a, a huge level of social and economic disruption. And then if you look around the world, uh, the consequences are potentially huge for all countries, no matter where it happens. The country that's attacked will almost certainly try to close its borders to make sure nothing else comes in. And that, if it's a country like the United States or China, would have a huge impact on world trade. Um, and in fact, Kofi Annan, when he was uh, Secretary General of the United Nations, said that uh, no matter where it took place, something like this would have a reverberating effect throughout the developing world and throw millions of people into poverty, causing what he called a second death toll in the developing world. And unfortunately, I think that's uh, realistic. So I think it, there are people who say, oh, you know, even if this is a realistic threat, it's really only a problem for the United States. I don't think that's correct. I think insecure nuclear material anywhere is a threat to everyone everywhere. When President Obama came to office, uh, he made locking down the nuclear material around the world that could be used to make a nuclear bomb one of his top priorities. And he said, I'm going to lead an effort to secure all the vulnerable nuclear material worldwide in four years, and I'm going to call a summit of leaders from around the world. And so the first nuclear security summit occurred in Washington in April of 2010. And I think it was very important because an issue that had been dealt with at more or less the level of a, a deputy office director in a foreign ministry somewhere was now being talked about at the level of presidents and prime ministers. And they were able to overcome some of the bureaucratic obstacles and to focus attention at the highest levels on doing something. What we need to be thinking about now is how do we transition from the sort of rush effort to secure nuclear material around the world in four years to the long haul effort of continual improvement because the issue of nuclear security is gonna be around as long as nuclear weapons and the material needed to make them exist. The Managing Atom Project is the locus of most of Harvard's research on nuclear policy, whether it's the future of nuclear energy, whether it's the spread of nuclear weapons, whether it's nuclear arms reductions, whether it's nuclear terrorism and nuclear security, we're the place where most of that work gets done. And it's a very international project and a very interdisciplinary project. At any given time, we usually have less than half of the people in the project who are Americans, uh, and we have physicists, we have lawyers, we have social scientists all working together to try to grapple with these problems because they really are problems that involve uh, a wide range of different fields. You can't really understand nuclear issues without understanding a little bit of the technology, but you can't really understand them without understanding a little bit of the policy issues uh, as well.